Good afternoon. I'm Boots Herrera, director of the Ateneo Art Gallery. I'm here today inside one of our galleries, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all, our guests in the Zoom event, and viewers in our Facebook live feed. I wish to acknowledge the special guests among us today, Father Roberto Yap, President of the Ateneo de Manila University, Mr. Eugenio Rotaru, Charge d'Affaires of the Embassy of Italy, Manila, Ms. Ada Ledesma Mabilangan, President, Carlo Ledesma Foundation, and Ambassador Philip Mabilangan, and Ms. Milet Manangkil, Lifestyle Editor of the Philippine Star, our publication and residency partners, and all the tutors who worked with us this year, and the shortlisted artists and writers who we will be introducing later. Before we begin our program, we wish to pay tribute to Professor Emmanuel Eric Torres, who passed away last September 13. Eric was the first curator of the Ateneo Art Gallery from its founding in 1960 until 2002. Born on April 1932, Eric was also a poet, author, art critic, and former professor at the English department here in Ateneo. Apart from several award-winning books on art, he also published three volumes of his poems. For more than four decades, Eric steered the programs of the Ateneo Art Gallery and was responsible for the growth of its collection, many of which you will see today exhibited in these galleries. Through his critical eye and the purchase fund from Fernando Sobel and the generous donations from artists and alumni, the AEG collection now comprises of iconic works of Philippine modern and contemporary art. In 2018, we were fortunate to welcome him to the new home of the Ateneo Art Gallery here in Arete, where he saw the collection in its permanent home. Together with the art community, we would like to express our deepest sympathies to the family of Eric Torres. Welcome Father Roberto C. Yap of the Society of Jesus, President of the Ateneo de Manila University for his opening remarks. Good afternoon and welcome to the 2021 Ateneo Art Awards. After a one-year hiatus and thanks to the efforts of Butserera and the Art Gallery team, the Ateneo de Manila is very pleased to bring back the Fernando Zubel Prizes for Visual Arts and the Purita Kalau Ledesma Prizes for Art Criticism. Since part of the awards objectives is to promote and recognize young contemporary visual artists, the awards this year cover the exhibitions of a two-year period, including the period that should have been covered by the 2020 awards. We are also pleased to note the high number of nominations and submissions for the awards. It signifies not just the heartwarming importance that the art community has accorded to the Ateneo Art Awards through the past decade and a half, but more meaningfully, it speaks of the continuing relevance of the arts in our lives. In its reflection, dissection, criticism, and even condemnation of humanity, and in its own exploration of what is possible, both for itself and the world, the arts force us to see the truth about ourselves and allow us to imagine an alternate and hopefully more compassionate existence. We are grateful for the support and gen generosity of partners who have made the 2021 awards possible and who share our commitment to develop Philippine contemporary art. We thank as well the Embassy of Italy in the Philippines for its patronage of young Filipino artists through its purchase price. Even with the end of Ambassador Giorgio's Guglielmino's posting, 
he endorsed his choice for the recipient for the Embassy of Italy purchase price. We acknowledge also Ambassador Marco Clemente, who will announce the recipient of the Embassy of Italy prize. And of course, we continue to be grateful for the lives of Fernando Sobel and Purita Kalao Ledesma, who have been the inspiration for the awards. And I salute the artists and writers who were shortlisted for the awards and congratulate in advance those who will be declared winners in today's event. Thank you for allowing us to see the world through your eyes and for transforming the world through your art. The last 18 months were difficult and demanding to say the least. The global pandemic and the intermittent lockdowns have forced us to rethink our values, our modes of survival and ways of living. The mu museum community was compelled to reassess parameters of success and focused on establishing more meaningful relationships with various communities as we shifted to online modes of programming. Ateneo Art Gallery had to evaluate its relevance after normal museum operations were disrupted. We felt that continuing with the annual Art Award last year, 2020, seemed trivial and dispassionate. In its stead, an acquisition prize and a theme-based writing prize were held. This year, the Ateneo Art Awards returns reinvigorated amidst what has been referred to as the better normal. We have adopted new features and formats for the Fernando Sobel Prizes for Visual Art and the Purita Kahlo Ledesma Prizes for Art Criticism with the intent of ensuring our continued relevance to our audience and the community of writers and artists. We have been blessed with the continued support of our program partners, the Kahlo Ledesma Foundation and the Philippine Star. Although this year does not allow us to collaborate with Shangri-La Plaza, our other program partner for, for an on-site exhibition, we look forward to working with them again after health restrictions have eased up. Art Asia Pacific, also a publication partner, continues to provide media exposure to Filipino artists. And this year, we welcome another partner, Katipunan Journal, which allows us to finally create a Filipino category for the Art Criticism Prize. Design is a significant component of the Ateneo Art Awards. Each year, we invite a graphic designer or a design team to work with us and translate what the program represents into graphic form. This includes the logo, the typeface, catalog design, and the trophy. For this edition, we worked with award-winning artist, painter, and designer, Felix Mago Miguel. In the last 25 years, he has designed more than 100 books for local and foreign publishers, some of which have won in the National Book Awards and the Gintong Aklat Awards. For the trophy, Felix proposed a design concept different from our standard format. To this, we agreed, as it will certainly mark the time when shifts and new directions were adopted. To say a brief background on his design concept, please welcome Felix Mago Miguel. I thank you for this opportunity to share a little about the work. So when I was asked to design the trophy, uh, there were two big challenges. One, to be able to capture uh, what the art awards actually stand for. And the next one is to how to encapsulate what's happening around us. So uh, to continue, um, I've titled the trophy infection. So let me read what an infection is. Infection, the invasion and multiplication of microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, and parasites that are not normally present within the body. So if you will notice later in um, the trophy, you will see several small triangles uh, encapsulated in several cubes. There, there are 27 triangles, of, uh, most of them black except for one. The interesting thing about it is if you look at the trophy, uh, everything doesn't seem to be what it is because 
everything moves around as you uh, move around the trophy, it changes. The way it appears to you changes. And uh, one thing that is certain, in this pandemic, uh, nothing has been certain. And they, you can either look at the uh, red triangle as the virus that is being contained by what we're doing here in, in the country or around the world, or you can actually look at it as ourselves uh, instead of us containing the virus, we have been contained by this pandemic. And it has created something very different, something weird, something tragic in some sense, because uh, we have to admit that these new ways that we are forming because of the pandemic has created for us a new world. And in my own experience, especially for the young uh, the young of uh, our society, including my own children. Uh, everything now is, you know, uh, covered in uncertainty. Everything now uh, has been detached. But I'm hoping that somehow in this new way, this new normal, what we have lost in the last 18 months, which is physical connection, as well as true empathy, uh, will return. And uh, if, if, we won't ret- if the new normal will be very different, then... Us as Filipinos, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we will find another way of truly connecting and interacting and showing a love for each other. Kaya marami po salamat. Again, thank you po for this opportunity. And I would like to say in advance, congratulations to, to those that uh, participated and won in this year's Ateneo Art Awards. Thank you. Trophy design was um, well executed, no, um, although quite complex. No, it was well executed, but by our colleagues in Seagull Glass. The establishment of the Purita Kahlo Ledesma Prizes in art criticism in 2014 marked our commitment to support the community of writers and critics who are integral to the development of art and culture. This would not have been possible without the partnership, support, and guidance of the president of the Kahlo Ledesma Foundation. Please welcome Ms. Ada Ledesma Mabilangan for her message. Good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for joining us in today's celebration. On behalf of the Kalaw Ledesma Foundation, I would like to first of all acknowledge the presence of His Excellency Marco Clemente, Ambassador of the Republic of Italy to the Philippines. May I take this opportunity to thank our partners, Father Bobby Yap of Ateneo University, Boots Herrera of Ateneo Art Gallery, Milet Manangkil of Philippine Star, Elaine Nang, and H.G. Masters of Art Asia Pacific. And this year, we have new partners. So a very warm welcome to Alvin Yapan of Katipunan Journal. And from Bacolod, our residency partners, Charlie Ko and Manny Montilibano. Thank you for your trust, your help, and most of all, your friendship. Today marks the eighth year of the Purita Kalo Ledesma Prize for Art Criticism. It has been a very gratifying experience for those of us on the sponsorship side, as I hope it is just as rewarding to you, the writers. When we began in 2014, we sort of took a gamble we did not know if we would be able to sustain the award. And um, we were hoping that it would become a springboard to a writing career for aspiring young writers. As I look back, I believe that the last eight years has indeed proven to have inspired young men and women to hone their critical thinking and writing skills and engage in the intellectual and artistic life of this country. 
every year we try to improve, innovate, and keep the price relevant. And this year is no exception. Purita Kalaw Ledesma believed the change was good. The change was not something to be afraid of. That despite challenging or difficult times, these would be opportunities for growth. So heeding her example, we asked ourselves, does the PKL price still serve a purpose considering the times we live in when many can hardly keep body and soul together? Why focus on something so ephemeral that cannot be measured in pesos and centavos? Something that nourishes only the soul while the body is starving? I do not know the answer to these questions. Each of us has his, her, his and or her own experiences and perspectives, and therefore have our own understanding of the meaning of art. But that's where art criticism is so beautiful because it can bring forth different truths and different voices that may not always be apparent. The essays you've contributed reflect your own perspectives and you've expressed them in very stark and honest language. You have expressed your daily struggles during the pandemic in beautiful prose and you have shown how art can be even more vital during hard times. Perhaps one day we can look back at this difficult period reread the essays and understand the depths of suffering that many people encountered and lived through. I thank you for your voices that soared above the din and noise of everyday living to remind us that there is more to life than just surviving. That despite the challenges, there are beacons of light amidst the darkness and we are grateful. Thank you for being part of this worthy endeavor. Good day. The online mode of work has also brought advantages, making people outside of our immediate location easily accessible. We thank all our jurors for both the Writing Prize and the Visual Arts Prize for their patience and contribution to the insightful discussions and deliberations that led us to arrive at this year's shortlists. Our panel of jurors for the 2021 Purita Kahlo Ledesma Prizes for Art Criticism are Dr. Ramon Barbasa, Associate Professor, Philosophy Department, Ateneo de Manila University. Milet Manangkil, Lifestyle Editor of the Philippine Star, represented by Egan Dibayan, visual artist, writer, and former assistant lifestyle editor. H.G. Masters, Deputy Editor and Deputy Publisher, Art Asia Pacific. Padmapani Perez, writer and owner, Mount Cloud Bookshop. Judy Freya Sibayan, artist, independent curator, and art critic, and Professor, English Department, De La Salle University. And Alvin Yapan, Associate Professor, Filipino Department, Ateneo de Manila University. And Editor, Katipunan, Journal ng Mga Pag-aaral, Sawika, Panitikan, Sining at Kultura. To give us insights on their experiences as jurors, please welcome Alvin Yapan and Ramon Barbasa. Isang mainit na pagbati sa Purita Kalo Ledesma Prize for Art Criticism kasama na ang Ateneo Art Awards ng Ateneo Art Gallery sa isa na namang matagumpay na taon ng pagtataguyod ng sining at kritisismong pansining sa Pilipino sa gitna ng pandemya. Sa gitna ng nararanasan natin ngayong krisis pantao, akma lamang na pagmunihan natin ang ating hinaharap sa tema ngayon ng patimpalak 
na navigating crisis, arts, and our futures. At napakaganda ng mga ibinungang pagmumuni ng ating mga kalahok. Na sa gitna ng lahat ng ito, pinakamahalaga pa rin ang pagkilala natin sa pagbuo ng komunidad sa paglampas natin sa anumang krisis. At sa pagbuo ng mga komunidad, hindi matatawaran ang sentral na papel ng sining. Malugod kong binabati ang lahat ng kalahok at nagpapasalamat sa Ateneo Art Gallery at Kalo Ladesmo Foundation sa pag-imbita sa Journal ng Katipunan bilang katuwang sa paglalathala ng nanalong lahok sa wikang Pilipino. Nakikibahagi ang Journal ng Katipunan sa inyong mga adhikain na palaganapin, palalimin, at higit pang pagyamanin ang pagpapahalaga natin sa ating kultura at sining. Ako si Raymond Barbaza ng Kagawaran ng Pilosopiya ng Ateneo de Manila University. Nais nice kong magpasalamat sa lahat ng nasa likod ng Purita Kalaw Ledesma Prizes for Art Criticism. Si Nabuts Herrera, Director ng Ateneo Art Gallery at ang kanyang katuwang na si Esti Bagos. Si Ada Ledesma Mabilangan ng Kalaw Ledesma Foundation mga kapwa ko, miyembro ng jury, at ang lahat ng mga manunulat na lumahok sa palik sa hang ito. Natutuwa akong makita at makilala kayong lahat. No? Yung pagbabasa pa lamang ng mga akda ng mga lumahok ay isang malaking gantimpala. No? Pero kasi siya ding tunay ang pakikipagpalitan at pakikipagtalaban sa mga kapwa ko, jurors. No? May suspense pa nga, no? Pagbati at pasasalamat sa inyong lahat. Tunay kayong malaking biyaya, lalo na ngayong mahirap na panahon ng pandemya. Kapit lang. Huwag bibitiw. Kapit lang sa lapis o sa ballpen. Muli, Isang malaking pasasalamat at pagpupugay sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Alvin and Momo. And now it is our pleasure to present the shortlisted writers for the 20, 2021 Purita Kahlo Ledesma Prizes for Art Criticism. The Purita Kahlo Ledesma Prizes in Art Criticism, English category. Internet knows no region. How artists from Western Visayas broke barriers during a global pandemic. In the digital world, where spaces have become less and less bound by geography, the center expands to cover those which were once in the peripheries. The art world has become more inclusive. Doors opened to artists who could not afford to uproot their lives and transfer to Manila. Venues were created for in-depth dialogues in topics that zoomed in on the weakness and highlighted the strength of art communities in the regions. Kiko Del Rosario, Piercing Loss, Streaming Desire. Tita Inalda and his elder sister shared a striking account. In the past, Tubig Olan was collected for disinfecting the image after procession, while Apulang Bato was used for fair skin furbishing. Ray, a devotee, added that this type of cleansing was essential to protect against the Habagat's harmful blow. But even as its material intimacies had been conveyed, the image was cached in 2020. Elizabeth Ruth Dero, the artist's social responsibility in the time of crisis, 
on Leslie the Chavez's I Like Art Fairs and Art Fairs Like Me. Some consider COVID-19 as the reason for our current socio-political turmoil and recession. But this is not a classic case of cause and effect, when the reality is that the virus can only be credited for exposing a system already in a state of decay. After all, a society built on capitalism, especially one run by a macho fascist government, dwindles in the face of disaster as capitalism itself serves as the root of the problem. Carla T. Gamalinda Art and the Inevitable Crisis of the Screens The screen allows for the tangible to give way to the intangible, while the experience of material art can never be substituted. The screen now demands its own legitimacy. The good thing that comes from acknowledging this crisis is that it creates alterity from what exists, and if assessed and decided upon carefully, it is possible to lead towards a culture of generosity wherein more people can gain from the enchantments of art. Ali Garibay, Birthing an Alternative Culture Amidst a Crisis The Linangan is a continuing realization of an envisioned future as a collective. It is an alternative school and community where artists learn with and from each other and develop a bond that translates into collective identity. It is a platform for insightful social analysis to create conscious and empowered art making. In it and through it, creating art is making beliefs concrete. Art is living culture, being embodied. Portia Placino, Forging on by the Mountainside I miss the cold breeze on my face. The air from the mountainside was always refreshing before a face mask and face shield blocked it. Our connections and communities are like this now, as filtered as the air we breathe. The art world has taken for granted the energetic crowd in exhibit openings, spirited debates in workshops, and lively conversations in conferences. We've had countless online exhibitions, Zoom talks, and digital content to keep the art world going. Necessary, but are they enough? The Purita Kalau Ledesma Prizes in Art Criticism, Filipino Category Mika Ann Cabango, Ang Hikayat sa Pag-aaral ng Sining Bayan dimensyon ng sini sa pangkabuuan. Una, bahagi ito ng material na kultura. At ikalawa, karunungang nakalapat sa pamumuhay at adaptasyon sa geographical at ekolohikal na kondisyon. Muli tayo makipag-ugnayan sa kalikasan at mga tagapagbantay ng lahat ng buhay. Higit sa lahat, pinagtitibay ng paglikha ang mismo pakikipag-ugnayan natin sa ating kapwa at komunidad. Jaffe V. Fajardo Nandyan lang Kultura at mga sining Maraming pang mga hindi kasiguraduhan sa kasalukuyan ngunit hindi may tatanggi na nandyan lang sa paligid ang ating sariling atin mula sa ating kinakain. Mga monumento na nadadaanan, mga kwentong na ipapasa at nababasa, mga mural sa bawat pader at iba pa na hindi natin nagbibigyan ng pansin. Pero matagal na palang nandyan. Kapag nanalo na tayo sa pandemya kung saan nakatanggal na ang ating face mask, marahil mas makakahingang maigi ang lahat kapag nakapagproseso at nakapagnilay-nilay ang bawat isa sa tulong ng ating kultura at mga sin. George Irving Gandingan, Habang Wala Pang Matino Hindi ako fan ng small talks habang akong mag-reply. Pinaguan ko ang mga tanong na kamusta sa pagsimula ng Zumosin period. Mangyayaring sabihin lang agad-agad nang walang paligoy-ligoy, nang walang mga paimbabaw na pangungumusta. Habang wala pang matino, bukod sa mga pantaso ng pangsalbas sa sariling katinoan ng mga proyekto, humanap kami ng pag-uubusan ng ekstra-ekstrang oras, talino at lahas. Ang bag na rin sa pagtutulak sa natapilok na ekonomiya. Si Tita Cars na bukod sa pagtitinda ng spaghetti sa kanilang village, ay nagbabato rin sa akin ng mga racket na dapat pagpasahan ng resume. Sa 
congratulations to all shortlisted writers. From this list, in the English and Filipino categories, the winners were selected by our publication partners. For the Philippine Star, may we call on Ms. Milet, Milet Manangkil, Lifestyle Editor, to join us. The Philippine Star selects Carla T. Gamalinda for her essay, Art in the Inevitable Crisis of the Screens. For Art Asia Pacific, may we call on HG Masters to join us on screen, the deputy editor and deputy publisher of Art Asia Pacific. Art Asia Pacific selects Portia Placino for her essay, Forging on by the Mountainside. For Katipunan Journal, may we call on editor Alvin Yapan. Magandang hapon uh, at dahil exciting din naman, sabi nga ni uh, Momo kanina, ang pinagdaanan na judging dito sa Pilipinang kategory. Pinabati ko si uh, Chappie Pahardo na siyang napili ng mga kurado para sa uh, kategoryang Pilipino. For Katipunan Journal, Chappie Pahardo for his essay Nandyan Lang, Kultura at Mga Sining. to the winning writers and we look forward to your contributions within this year. This year we mark a new component of the Art Criticism Prize. We are beginning a partnership with Orange Project as host to one of the winning writers for a one-month residency in Negros Occidental. We are grateful for the support of Charlie Ko and Manny Montelibano and the team of artists and patrons who are part of the art community in Negros Occidental. The Orange Project Art Residency Program will run for one month, wherein the selected writer can explore the local art scene in Negros Island. The writer will be given the opportunity for immersion through interactions with the local artists and practitioners across the island via talks, workshops, and conversational exchanges. Call on Charlie Ko to join us on screen. The recipient of the Orange Project's Writer's Residency is Ms. Portia Placino. Congratulations again to all the shortlisted writers, the winners, and the residency recipient. All winning and shortlisted essays will be included in the exhibition catalog, which will be available in print soon. But while waiting, you may access these essays via the Vital Points microsite, and that's pkl.ateneoartgallery.com. of the award program in 2020, the Fernando Sobel Prizes for Visual Art now covers a two-year period from May 2019 to May 2021. This led us to consider adopting a biennial schedule for the Visual Art Prize beginning this year. 
It will alternate with return exhibitions by past Ateneo Art Awards winners, while the art criticism program will continue annually. This year, over 140 exhibitions were nominated, including a considerable number held in between lockdowns. It is commendable how artists and galleries resolved and managed to continue with its regular exhibition calendar while adopting necessary public access and health protocols. Exhibitions held within this two-year period reveal an art community that is constantly responsive to societal and ecological concerns. For the 12 shortlisted artists in particular, creative practice has been an act of mark-making, a reconciliation with the everyday, a way of connecting with one's community and history, and the process of testing the limits of technology with personal, social, and political agendas. The tutors of the visual arts category worked with the AAG team through the two-phase process, the shortlisting and the deliberation. The last phase was an opportunity to meet each artist, which took more than six continuous hours online. I especially want to note their generosity for commending many of the artists by way of extending advice for future consideration. Our 2021 panel of jurors for the Fernando Sobel Prizes for Visual Arts are Painter Marcel Antonio Katia Guerrero, visual artist and archivist and co-founder of Luz Viminda PH Lisa Ito Tapang, independent curator and instructor, Art Theory and Criticism, College of Fine Arts, UP Diliman Pete Jimenez visual artist and sculptor, former general manager, Optima Digital. Maya Munoz, visual artist and winner, 2006 Ateneo Art Awards. And Philippe Pirot, curator and art historian, adjunct senior curator, UC Berkeley Art Museum, and former dean, Stadel Schul, Frankfurt am Main, Germany. Please welcome Ms. Lisa Ito Tapang for her juror's message. Congratulations to the shortlisted artists of the Ateneo Art Awards. I think your inclusion in this year's reckoning is a significant moment. It happens in the middle of a global pandemic and a national crisis which has affected the quality of life of artists and of countless Filipinos in very drastic ways. So it is a learning experience to be able to participate as a juror while operating remotely like this. And in many, many ways, the artists and your works, they give us a lot to think about in terms of what is essential what is urgent, and what is necessary given the conditions that we face today. The shortlist of the awards offers a view of exhibition making and art practice before and especially during the COVID-19 pandemic as it hit the country. These reflect on questions of materiality, medium, and message that Philippine contemporary artists continue to grapple with. They attest to how art channels our will to cope whether as individuals or as part of larger movements across the enhanced community quarantine last year up to the recurring failed lockdowns of today. They assert the necessity to reflect and respond through practice to the experience of a society falling apart and a world constantly being unraveled. And in doing so, these offer the possibility of thinking about what lies next and what to do. Again, congratulations to all of the awardees. Thank you to our fellow jurors, the Ateneo Art Gallery, and especially the award secretariat and staff. Your time, dedication, and collective labor has made all of this possible. Marami pong salamat at padayon po sa lahat ng mga manggagawang pangkultura na bumubuo at nagtataguyod sa gawad na ito. Tuloy po sa paglikha at pagtugon sa loob at labas ng espasyo ng sining.
thank you, Lisa, for that message. We are pleased to present the shortlisted artists for the 2021 Ateneo Art Awards Fernando Zobel Prizes for Visual Art. The Fernando Zobel Prizes for Visual Art. Brisa Amir, Untitled Blankets, Solo Exhibition at Art Informal Makati. The exhibition seeks to be an inquiry on spaces, those of which we share and inhabit. I wanted to explore the ever-changing landscape of my community by recording my surroundings. It is a collection of sentiment, speculation, and sound. It has grown to become an archive of both the material and the cerebral, the physical space and its structures, and my instinctive and personal relationship with it. Renz Baluyo, Empire, Solo Exhibition at West Gallery. I came up with the concept of Empire, hoping to make sense of the repercussions of the coronavirus pandemic to me and the structures of life as we know it. I wanted to make sense of everything in a season where our sense of time and place have been disrupted. Like in his work, the ominous gates greet us to an uncharted and menacing era of what remains when we are powerless. It is then our decision if we decide to keep still or move amid these broken empires. Nice Buenaventura. Fools will copy, but copies will not fool. Solo exhibition at Art Informal Makati. Fools will copy, but copies will not fool. Attempted to show that through the generation loss that is inevitable in the process of printing, every copy becomes an unfaithful copy. And perhaps that's not such a big compromise in the area of the cultural authority of the original work of art, especially if it means that more people can experience it in its various iterations. Mars Bugawan, Appear, Disappear, One Half, One Fourth, Solo Exhibition at Capitana Gallery. The show progressed to be musings on the rural landscape, printmaking interventions on new media, and plastic constructions revolving around the musa or banana plant. In this exhibition, time had become a medium on its own as the show relied on it, should it appear now or disappear for later. Appear, disappear, one half, one fourth affirms the cycle of life, the fractions of possibilities, and the uncertainty of the human condition as revealed through a child's game. Dr. Carayo, Patingin, Solo Exhibition at Blank Gallery. Huwag kang mag-alala, hatikong blanga nga ang bibig. Mata ko lang ang may alam, matitatago sa diblib. Sa mata ng Diyos, nakikita niya lahat. Kitang-kita kung paano ka sumigaw at mga gat. Huwag kang mag-alala, di ka niya huwisgahan. Alam niya, tao ka at mahinang nilalang. Mga uri ng mata, mata mo at mata niya. Sa tingin pa'y lalim at lihim na pagbuna. Nakakaw na tingin, nakakakita sa dilim. Iba't iba ang nakikita pero bulag-bulag at din. Celine Lee, The Length and Breath of Depth, Solo Exhibition at Underground. In summary, The Length and Breath of Depth, was my attempt at discovering what art means nowadays, especially visual art, where so much of its efficacy relies on just by looking at an artwork, even if it's filtered through our screens, where physicality is almost discouraged, thus leaving essence in obscurity. How can you truly grasp something and can you actually do so? We 
have asked another juror to give his insights. Please welcome Philippe Pirot, all the way from Germany. Hello, uh, dear awardees and dear friends of the Ateneo Art Awards 2021. Um, I'm very grateful to have had the occasion to meet you online and to see your works, your wonderful exhibitions. And of course, in these pandemic times, it is extremely frustrating to not have been there in person and to have uh, get to know you all in person um, and have seen your incredible works. Um, but I hope, and this is a, a, a promise, to do that in the future. Uh, I would like to get to know you all better. Um, I want to congratulate the winners, but I can't disclose yet who they are. Um, but I really want to congratulate them uh, for their outstanding work, their precise work that is really like uh, often very specific. I've been um, extremely happy and positively surprised by the uh, conceptual rigor of some of the artists, the incredible capacity of doing research and the wonderful uh, talent and virtuosity in creating forms and images. Um, it has been extremely enriching for me and that means I would like to stay in touch, uh, keep contact and maybe uh, we might have the chance in the future uh, to work together. Uh, I'm very grateful to Boots Herrera for uh, having invited me in this jury, um, in which group I encountered some people I met before, but uh, most of them I didn't meet yet. And also to them, uh, I say hello again, and I would like to uh, meet you all in person in the Philippines or somewhere else in the world. But I hope that uh, the situation will allow to come to Manila at some uh, point in the near future. Congrats to all and have a great party. Thank you. Thank you, Philippe. We look forward to your next visit to Manila and we'll certainly have a party with you. The last six of the 12 shortlisted artists are The Fernando Zobel Prizes for Visual Art. Cristina Lopez, Portraits, Proxies, Solo Exhibition at the Drawing Room. For part of this show, I rendered portraits of people who don't exist through a generative adversarial network or GAN. The dataset for this consisted of over 500 profile pictures of paid trolls in the Philippines. Technology used and abused has its own set of real-world, tangible, physical effects. It also affects us internally, shaping our consumer behaviors, circadian rhythms, appetites, and our literal likes and dislikes. It can sometimes manifest itself as a strong arm for a strong man, or as a glimmering portal for willing adventure. Henriel Baltazar Pagkaliwan. On this site will rise, in Fathom, the monumental in art series, group exhibition at Orange Project Bacolod. My personal experience with monumentality involves landscapes I am most familiar with since I was young. Mounds of sand, gravel, and cement found in our front yard. As I grew up, I realized that while the culture of building and expanding communities is usually perceived as an indicator of progress, there are also consequences of shifting of spaces around us the replacing and changing of landscapes that we used to know and love. Yanis Sikuya, Nish, Solo Exhibition at Boston Art Gallery. As we make our own niche grow, we inevitably transform the vicinity in which our niche thrives. This is not to say that the carving for a niche for oneself is inherently bad or undesirable. In fact, in retaining the organic feel of the artworks, 
I am of the opinion that this is as natural as the in instinct survive. That being said, the exhibition is not advocating a mere surrender to our destructive tendencies. Rather, in being aware of it, we can somehow control it and turn it into something more meaningful. Gel Suarez, Small Bones Holding a Mountain, Solo Exhibition at West Gallery. Guided by my own hands, I think the entirety of this exhibition is an exercise of recovery, rebuilding, and unburdening. Small Bones Holding a Mountain is a love letter to all things lost and you know, hope for and I hold dear. And just like the odds and ends that I gather from these surplus visits or this found its way in this exhibition, the works are a testament that everything we touch will arrive elsewhere. Jo Tanierla, Pagguro at Pagalsa, Natural Depictions and Illustrated Prophecies, Helasha, 1910. Solo exhibition at UP Vargas Museum. Pagburo at Pagalsa fluctuates within these interspersed temporalities and social conditions, utilizing fabrication and history to assert an urgency of collective defiance. Uh, Pagburo at Pagalsa proposes the inevitability of collective resistance against oppressive systems. The exhibition anticipates this eventuality and argues that we can confront the ruling class and the power structures that they maintain. And when done properly, we can have a breakfast unburdened by economic insecurities and political repression. Miguel Lorenzo Uy, I Am That I Am, Solo Exhibition at Underground. The words God, man, and technology has further been blurred through advancements in economic systems, communications, and I attempt to deconstruct how the prevailing state of capitalism and its delusion somehow made this intersection something we all must talk and think about. If we are truly the gods we all try to become, then who serves us? And if there is truly a god, then what has it become today? Support of the Embassy of Italy through a purchase price has added another dimension to the Ateneo Art Awards program by compiling its own collection of Philippine contemporary art. This underscores the reciprocal relationship of art and diplomacy. On behalf of the Italian Embassy, please welcome Mr. Eugene Rotaru for his message and announcement of the recipient of the Embassy of Italy purchase price from among the 12 shortlisted artists. Good afternoon and greetings, and greetings from the Embassy of Manila. I hope you can hear me well. Greetings also from uh, Ambassador-designate Marco Clemente, the new ambassador of Italy in uh, the Philippines, who has already arrived here in, in Manila but is yet to present his credentials, so he cannot attend today's event. Uh, the Embassy of Italy Purchase Prize was started in 2018 by the previous ambassador, Ambassador Giorgio Guglielmino, a true lover of contemporary art, to support emerging Philippine artists and at the same time collect a small but significant collection of contemporary art permanently exposed at the Chancery of the Embassy of Italy Manila here. The Embassy is glad to continue the important partnership with Ateneo University and this tradition, which has reached its fourth year uh this year i would like to also thank the Ateneo university for organizing this event and in particular director herrera thank you so that said uh without further ado i'm happy to announce the winner of the embassy of italy purchase prize 2021 which is miss brisa mir for her exhibition called untitled blankets I don't think we are hearing you. 
I think it's the microphone. Hello, ano, kalakip nito yung aking puso at damdamin sa inyo, sa mga sumuporta. At higit sa lahat, sa isang tao na nagbigay sa akin ng kahulugan sa aking pagka-Pilipino, ang aking mahal na ina. Thank you. You're very, very much welcome. This was very well deserved. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Rotaru, and congratulations, Brisa Amir, for being the recipient of the Purchase Prize from the Embassy of Italy. An artist residency overseas is another component of the Visual Arts Prize. Unfortunately, the global health crisis has limited its viability for now, but we hope to revive our links with partners in Singapore, UK, and Australia. This year, we explored local residency partnerships outside of Metro Manila as opportunities for young contemporary artists to engage with other art communities. Our local residency partners are A Bungalow Artists Foundation Residency Project through Adrian Lizares. The residency is the result of several years of working with artists and co-curators at the Capitana Gallery which is located at the Silong or the ground floor space of the Balay ni Tanadikang, one of Negros Occidental's most preserved heritage houses and was built in 1872. The A Bungalow Residency Project is designed to give the visiting artist space and freedom to observe the island and cast their actions to it. It is also designed for artists from different regions of the country or elsewhere to come in contact and communicate with local artists and other venues or educational institutions in the community. Casa San Miguel Foundation Art Residency through Alfonso Coke Bolipata and Elmer and Plett Berlongen. Casa San Miguel is a community-based center and art residency sanctuary for visual artists, musicians, and creative writers. Established in 1993 by Coke Bolipata, CASA, also known as Creative Alternatives for Social Actions, their residency programs and scholarships aim to focus on further honing and mentoring artists in deepening their craft while being immersed in the community of San Antonio, Zambales. Project Space Filipinas residency program through Leslie de Chavez. PSP is an artist-initiated platform founded and led by Leslie in 2006. Now based in Lukban, Quezon, their platform is committed to the development of various practices of art through traditional, alternative, and emerging approaches. Through a grassroots on-ground engagement, PSP hopes that this residency opportunity can springboard artists into further emergence of art among the community and abroad. No Space Residency through Nona Garcia and Kawayan de Guia. No Space is located in Baguio, now known as a UNESCO creative city. It has for a long time been a cosmopolitan destination for artists and thinkers and a melting pot of highland indigeneity and lowland cultures. Once known as Little America to outsiders, this former American hill station is the main gateway to the Cordillera. No Space intends to encourage artists to undergo an informal process that considers a weaving of or discussions around indigeneity, transition, contemporary art practices, decolonization, and the process of collaborative art making. From among the 12 shortlisted artists, the jurors deliberated last August 13 to arrive at the three winners. Except for one juror, that's Philippe Pirot, the other jurors were not informed of the final decision. This means that they too have been waiting for more than a month for the results. And so finally, I'm pleased to announce 
The winners for the 2021 Ateneo Art Awards Prizes for Visual Arts are, and in no particular order, Cristina Lopez for her exhibit Portraits, Proxies, held at the, at the Drawing Room last March 2021. Nice Buenaventura, Fools Will Copy, But Copies Will Not Fool, her solo exhibition held at Art Informal Makati last June 2019. And Joe Tanierla, for his exhibit Pagburo at Pagalsa, Natural Depic Depictions and Illustrated Prophecies, Helasho 1910, a solo exhibition held at the UP Vargas Museum. Christina, Nice, and Joe. May I call on um, Aji Lizares to join us on screen so we can announce the recipient of the residency program. Yes, good afternoon, Boots, and um, thank you for having me here. Very happy. Um, for the A Bungalow Art Residency Program, we are inviting Joe Tanierla. Oh, shit. Thank you, thank you. Looking forward. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to the residency. <laughs> wow. May we call on Leslie De Chavez to join us on screen? Project Space Pilipinas is inviting Christina Lopez. Thank you for uh, granting me the residency and the award. Means a lot. Thank you. May I call on Coke Bolipata and Elmer and Plet Berlongan to join us on screen? Hi, Coke. So, Casa San Miguel is inviting Joe Tanierla for their residency program. May we call on Nona Garcia and Kawai and Tigia to join us on screen? Hi, Nona and Gawayan. So for No Space Residency, they are inviting Christina Lopez. Thank you again. Uh, it, it means a lot to me. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm so surprised. I don't know what to say. So I just want to say thank you. Congratulations again to all the shortlisted artists, writers, and to the winners. The 2021 Ateneo Art Awards catalog will be available soon. In place of an exhibition, longer versions of the videos presented earlier featuring writers and artists will be released online. Before we end this program, we would like to extend our gratitude to the writers who submitted essays, the, all the nominators and the galleries, museums, and individuals who assisted in the various phases of the 2021 Ateneo Art Awards. Special thanks to Raniel Aragon, June David Miranda, um, Joe Carl Bunda for working with us to produce the artists and writers video. 
to the theater production team of Arete, headed by Di Cortesano, who's everyone, everyone's here in front of me, um, with the assistance of Glenn Lopez. Thank you for the creative guidance and technical support that enabled us to realize today's event. I also wish to acknowledge the Ateneo Art Gallery team, composed of Joel De Leon, Ria Aguilar, Esti Bagos, Monique Hilario, Joseph Caligner, and Ari Sardido, for facilitating a smooth transition to online modes. And lastly, our gratitude to the trustees of, and president of the Ateneo de Manila University for the continued support to the Ateneo Art Gallery and the Philippine art community as a whole. We look forward to welcoming you soon here in the museum, but for now we want to, we invite you to check our social media platforms and the Ateneo Art Gallery website for updates on our other programs. Thank you for joining us today and keep safe.